And as mentioned there, the last meeting between these two, the 7-0 at Anfield uh, back in March. No Bruno Fernandes, by the way, in this one. Here's a look at our picks. Everybody going Liverpool except for Frank. Uh, Frank, what do you know that we don't? Why are you picking United to get a point here at Anfield? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I know football so much that, uh, that I think that you cannot um, look back to last season to believe even looked back last week to believe that it's going to be easy for Liverpool. And uh, Klopp explained that very well, where he doesn't like when, uh, when the, the, the beast is just wounded, but not dead. And uh, the reaction can be terrible. Everybody sees that it's normal. Everybody sees Liverpool winning, which is only fair. But it's a derby. They hate each other so much. They've been slapped in the face uh, big time last year. They want, they, they want to react, and we expect a reaction. And again, I'm pretty sure that they're going to react at some point. I might be wrong, but I have that feeling when, when you ask for the prediction that mm -hmm. it could be something special uh, uh, in that game and uh, the something special would be maybe a draw uh, for Manchester United and Liverpool. You know, Stevie, it's interesting. You're usually kind of pessimistic here, almost like you're taking out the umbrella with mm -hmm. your picks. You've got them winning, so am I to take that as just a sign of overwhelming confidence that Liverpool are going to get it done Sunday? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand what Frank's on about. Mm -hmm. You know, football's a, a strange animal, and teams, particularly big teams like Manchester United, going into a game can, can all of a sudden change their attitude, which is the biggest thing for Man United. If they change their attitude, then not only against Liverpool at Anfield, but other games will turn out different than what seems to be happening for Manchester United. But after that, that's it. Mm. You, can't, you can't look at these two teams, the way they play, the way they're set up, the names on the back of the jerseys. I mean, you just you can't, in all honesty, sit and come up with a particular reason other than blind faith why Manchester United are going to win this game. Mm. I, I, I think... What Frank's talking about with a draw is the best they can get mm. because they're going to be under pressure. Liverpool against everybody and anybody at Anfield this year are averaging three goals again. Is this all of a sudden going to dry up against a team that are struggling defensively? Or does Anana stand on his head? I mean, these are the reasons why United can get something. The goalie stands on his head. I mean, it's hardly analytics at its best, is it? <laughs> no. but the truth is, that's what's going to have to happen. Uh, Jules, you heard from Eric Ten Hag there. He says he's not worried about his job. Um, let's say things go south and, and very far south on Sunday for Manchester United. Could he be worried about his job maybe this time next week? I, I think he should be worried about his job now, Sebi, and I think he is worried. He can't really say it like that in his press conference publicly, but I think he's worried. They've lost 12 games out of 24 this season in all competitions. That's a 50% win ratio. The, the worst ever win ratio for a season for United was back in the 30s, and that was 61. They're way behind that already. And I, I hope for them that it gets better through the season. But I think he should be worried, especially when he knows that sooner rather than later, Sir Jim Radcliffe is going to arrive at the club with a new sporting director, with, a, with, with him being the new boss in this football club, certainly for the football side of things. And if I was at Eric Ten Hag, I'd be very worried. He's also said today in his press conference that he, he has the backing of the club. That's what the club is telling him. I don't know who at the club is telling him because right yeah. now there's not really anybody in charge. The Glazers don't talk to Ten Hag. Richard Arnold is gone pretty much on his way out. Myrtle Fletcher are waiting to get the chop as well as soon as Radcliffe would come in. And it's not Sir Jim Radcliffe who's talking to Ten Hag either. So maybe <laughs> someone is telling him that he's OK, that he's safe for now. But if I was him, I would be really worried. And I think he knows that he's already. Because they lose again this weekend. It's already on the back of what we saw. And Klopp said, oh, you won manager of the month last, last month. OK, yeah. Uh, but in football, things go so quickly, especially after what is already a very difficult season for him.